There's this movie Contact in which um, Jodie Foster listens to the output of a radio telescope and suddenly finds uh, something that is worth uh, investigating, that is, uh, that is actually uh, an extraterrestrial signal. Okay, so Breakthrough Listen doesn't listen to uh, signals at all. Uh, we are not, uh, we're not capturing audio signals, we are capturing electromagnetic waves uh, that we transform in electric signals. The signals that, we, that we're expecting are not really musical signals. We sort of have a good understanding of uh, the properties that a signal that you want to transmit should look like. Uh, there are some uh, modulation types that are very efficient, uh, so it's pretty narrow in the frequency domain, and it also carries lots of information. And such signals, for instance, are your car key, for instance, it's emitting a signal, just enough information for the receiver of your key to understand that it's now time to uh, unlock the car or uh, FM transmissions, for instance. Basically, you uh, embed an audio signal within the frequency of a pure sine wave. The FM radio is invaluable. So we are looking for different types of signals. The one that's been mostly, mostly interesting in the past decades is a narrowband transmission. So a narrowband transmission means that it's pretty narrow in the frequency domain. So a pure sine wave, for instance, it's the extreme narrowband signal. But the, the problem with a pure sine wave is that it carries uh, uh, not much information. In fact, it carries one bit of, of information. Uh, so one sine wave, uh, it's either on or it's off, so this is a, a one bit information. If you want to include much more information, then you're going to uh, have to be smart in the way you modulate your signal. And uh, the impact, the trade-off with this is that you increase the bandwidth of the signal. Um, the, the more information you want to put into, into your signal, uh, the larger the bandwidth of the signal will be. So it is possible that the signal uh, that is going to be transmitted by an extraterrestrial intelligence uh, will be complex and will maybe contain half of its, half of the energy will be focused in one very narrow band signal that is easily detected. And the second half of the signal could actually contain some information that is wider in the frequency bandwidth and therefore less detectable because the energy is, uh, is, is spread over more frequencies. Uh, for instance, if we are actually doing this, the Voyager 1 spacecraft. This spacecraft is transmitting lots of signals back towards us. The way uh, NASA uh, implemented the transmission uh, from that spacecraft is there's like a very, very uh, bright peak in the spectrum, a very narrow band signal that is transmitted that is right in the middle of two information uh, bearing signals. What we do is we try to detect this huge peak. It's very easily detected um, just to, uh, to set up our receiver instrument instrumentation to make sure that our analysis pipeline works well and that we're at least able to detect our own technology wherever it is in the sky. We have also uh, collected the data and made them available of this um, observation of Voyager 1. And if any viewer knows a little bit of Python, uh, then uh, that person might be interested in downloading our Jupyter notebook that explains step by step what the SETI pipeline uh, performs on the data and how to retrieve uh, the Voyager 1 signal. My background is in electrical engineering and I uh, focused my studies in signal processing, trying to extract information from um, the signal that is collected by any kind of sensor. It turns out in the group, I believe there are only two people that have the same background as me. The first computer I owned, uh, one of the first things that I did once I had an internet connection that I was not that bad, I downloaded SETI at home and that's when I learned about SETI. Uh, that's the first time I saw a spectrogram in my life, I think. Over, over uh, you know, my, my courses at university, uh, I was al always interested in manipulating, from a mathematical point of view, signals. When I spent my days uh, trying to remove and filter out those artificial signals, I was like, well, maybe I could actually try to recover them and maybe, maybe one of those signals could be not of human origin, it could be of extraterrestrial origin. And that's when the old picture of the SETI at home screensaver came back to my, um, to my mind. And then I checked who, you know, designed and built this, this system and it was the Berkeley SETI Research Center. So that's when I, I got really excited and interested in joining the group. 
plus jeune, ma passion était euh, l'ingénierie du son et j'ai voulu euh, euh, faire un diplôme d'ingénieur du son après le lycée. Et c'est là que je me suis intéressé à tout ce qui était si signal et euh, traitement du signal en particulier. J'ai eu aussi un profond intérêt pour euh, les maths et c'est ce qui m'a poussé vers un diplôme d'ingénieur. Euh, donc euh, diplôme d'ingénieur en génie électrique avec euh, spécialisation en traitement du signal. Une thèse en traitement du signal mais appliquée à la radioastronomie. Et cette thèse était euh, avec l'université d'Orléans d'une part et également euh, l'Observatoire de Paris. Après avoir euh, achevé mon euh, doctorat, euh, j'ai fait un premier postdoc en Australie à Sydney où euh, le but de ce, ce postdoc, ma, ma recherche en particulier, concernait le traitement des interférences. Donc comment euh, isoler des interférences euh, électromagnétiques, radioélectriques, et les extraire euh, le plus précisément possible de données astronomiques pour pouvoir faire que de l'astronomie, ne pas avoir à se soucier euh, des signaux euh, d'origine humaine. Puis à la fin de ce postdoc, qui a duré euh, deux ans et demi, euh, j'ai euh, contacté l'université de Berkeley et euh, en leur expliquant que j'étais très très intéressé par euh, faire de la recherche d'intelligence extraterrestre. Et, euh, et c'est comme ça que je me suis retrouvé avec le groupe euh, Breakthrough Listen. Et, euh, et voilà.